Can you make V8 horsepower out of a V6? More specifically, on the 2014 through 18 GM platform, V5.3 L83 and its baby brother LV3 4.3. I'm going to try and touch on that subject a little bit here. For my application, it's just a regular cab, two wheel drive Sierra. You'll find the 4.3 in double cabs, vans, all kinds of vehicles. I was looking to do this swap as far as swapping a V8 into here versus building a V6. When I say build, I just mean cam and bolt-ons. I'm not going too far in depth with this. My issue was availability of information on the V8 swap and cost. Of course, the V8 will bolt right in. As far as engine-related items, you need the transmission cross member, the drive shaft, the oil cooler lines, transmission cooler lines, the radiator. That's about it where I ran into a snag was the engine wiring harness. Some people said any specific one from a 14 through 18 V8 would work. Other people said it needed to be configured to this specific truck as far as a regular cab two wheel drive or if you had a double cab four wheel drive. Reached out to a couple swap, engine swap supplies. Nobody would give me any info. They wanted to sell me everything as a kit reached out to a couple tuners in my area. I'm in northern Florida. Nobody had good info. Some people said any wiring harness. Others said we need to get as specific as we can and some did not want to touch the truck at all because they were worried that the um, sorry the wiring harness would not interact with the ECU or it would work up with the anti-theft. I do know you can use the V6 ECU, just about every tuner confirmed that. It was just, will the engine wiring harness communicate to the transmission and everything else like it was supposed to? So that was one of my big issues. If anyone has information on that, feel free to post or comment. I'd love to find out more and share that info with people. I started breaking it down to cost and horsepower after I ran into the engine wiring harness issue. I'm no stranger to horsepower. I've had a turbocharged L83. I've had a supercharged L83. So trucks making anywhere is from 375 to the tire to 450. So this isn't my first rodeo. I've done DOD deletes on 4.3s, 5.3s, and 6.2s. So what it came down to me was I'm getting older, so simplicity, cost, and numbers. I'm not being rude to anybody, but even a 5.3 in a single cab truck, if it's not cammed and maxed effort, it's really not that impressive. I spoke with my local tuner, again, in my area. Bone stock 5.3, it just depends. Is it in a truck like this, or is it on a truck with 33-inch tires? But what we call bone stock is an intake and maybe an exhaust truck. On 93 or 87, I don't run the 85 because it's not available in my area. A 5.3 is making, on his dyno, 260 to 290 bone stock. Anywhere in between. He's had a ton of trucks. Just depends on the mileage and the health of the engine. A full bolt-on, which is intake, intake manifold, long tube headers, stock cam, of course, on 93 is making between 290 and 330 on his dyno. Just depends, again, health of the motor, and is the truck running smaller street tires, or is it running 33s or lifted. V6s, there's not much info out there. He's had one truck on the dyno. It had a set of 17-inch wheels and 285 tires, which is almost a 33. It came in making 240, and it left making 258, I believe, on pump gas. It just had an intake on it and an exhaust, nothing else. So he's very excited for this build because I'll be one of the first ones to throw it on the dyno with him and see what numbers we get. For my build, I went with the... BTR Truck Norris Jr. or LVX Stage 2 cam from BTR, ported intake and throttle body, JBA headers, and I had my heads redone. Not just cleaned up and new valves and springs, but the shop that I use, we've done a lot of work in the past with my previous build, so they did me a solid. They did a real nice valve job, and they cleaned up the intake and exhaust ports. By no means are these ported and polished or Frankenstein quality heads. Just, again, cleaned up is the best way to put it. Before I tore this motor down, it did have the typical DOD tick. I didn't have check engine lights or anything like that, but the ticking was driving me crazy. Cold check on the compression, I got 185 to 190 on each cylinder, so compression was still good with 140,000 miles. I was actually shocked. When I tore into this motor, everything was very clean. The valve covers, 
pulled the timing cover, the oil pan, nothing was too burned out. Well, I had this motor apart, I went ahead and did an oil pump, timing chain, tensioner, water pump, anything you don't want to do while it's out. So now we're going to get into cost. For the V8 swap, what I went over from the beginning, in my area, a long block is going to run you about 2500 that's a V8 motor with less than 100,000 miles and hopefully no DOD tick. So 2,500 there. While I was this far, I was going to go ahead and do, of course, a timing chain, an oil pump. I was going to do the 6-2 intake and throttle body and long tube headers. All that rounded up would be, let's call it $1,000, sourcing parts online. Then I needed all the parts we discussed for the V8 the radiator, transmission cross member, drive shaft, oil cooler lines, transmission cooler lines, engine wiring harness, again sourcing online another 600. What was actually a big cost on the V8 swap was tuning. A lot of shops, like I said, didn't want to touch it or were saying it was going to be more involved. So I was getting quotes of 800 to 1400 on tuning the V8 swap in here. So based on my figures, everything together, doing the work myself, I was spending anywhere from $4,600 to $5,000 on a V8 swap on this truck. My build here ran me just shy of $2,200. Uh, that was naming everything we named before. That was the BTR cam, springs, retainers, valve stem seals, including my head work from the machine shop. I bought the throttle body and intake manifold used. I got the shorty headers. I don't know what you call it, out of box, scratch and dent. So short of 2200 is, is what I'm into this build. On top of that's again, the simplicity. It is easier to work on the V8 and do things, I'm sorry, V6 versus a V8. Talking to the tuner, we're optimistic. He's an hour and a half from me, so we're doing revisions with HP tuners right now. There is a dyno on the tuning app, I guess. Again, it's probably not accurate. Once this is done, we're going to throw it on his dyno and see. He's thinking anywhere from 280 to 300 to the tire. Torque, we're not sure of. And of course, a V8 is going to have a ton more torque than the V6. You're down two cylinders and some displacement. But as far as horsepower, he's thinking 280 to 300. The research I've done, the BTR cam, I saw one on the truck on 33s make 265 and I believe it just had intake cam exhaust. And then another one I saw on the truck that had everything bone stock, just had the cam delete done, or cam swap done, slash DOD delete, and a good tune up in Atlanta. And it made 280, and that was on a two wheel drive truck. So with a couple little extra mods and hopefully a healthy motor, we're shooting for between 280 and 300. Yeah, going back to those numbers in the beginning, that is stock V8 horsepower. Again, torque, we're keeping out of the equation. E85, we're keeping out of the equation. But could you make V8 horsepower out of the V6? Absolutely. Is it worth it? That's, that's up to you guys. Obviously, you can go with the V8 and the sky's the limit. Building it NA, turbocharging, supercharging. V6, you are limited, but costs coming into play here. And what are you looking to do? I'm realistic. This truck is not going to turn 12s or even 13s in the quarter. I just wanted a more peppy truck. This truck was tuned before I did the swap and everything on it. And it is a pretty close to a night and day difference. I've got a ton more throttle or ton more power in, in the mid range, anywhere from 1800 to 4000 RPM. The truck feels peppy and light on its feet despite having a 323 rear end. One other thing I'll note, it's not performance related, but I'd recommend anyone do it while it's out. I did put a CTS V converter in here. There was a lot of talk, would it work on the V6? Would it line up with the flywheel? Absolutely. Bone stock, ZL1 from a Camaro or Cadillac CTS V6 speed torque converter, bolted right in, no problems at all. I don't think you need it with this cam, but while I was that far, I was not gonna skimp on the converter for, I think I spent under $300 on that and got it at a local AutoZone. So any questions, feel free to comment. I'll be posting a video up about the BTR cam later on this week. Um, specs, what I'm noticing, daily driving, power-wise, and I'll post a couple sound clips. I'm gonna get the exhaust redone. Again, right now it's just the third cat delete, so there's not much to hear. I'm gonna get a little muffler and a couple other things done, and I'll post some cam videos up with that.